you should find some some way of of being notified that uh, hey this is kind of liquidate all sit on the sidelines and you know be be very low stress while the rest of the world's you know falling apart around you here at liberty and finance we're licensed brokers with miles franklin we are standing by the inventory ready to make sure you get what you need even into the wee hours of night and on weekends because preparedness doesn't stop call us 1-888-81-LIBERTY that's 1-888-815-4237 hey everyone this is elijah k johnson with liberty and finance and back with us today is our good friend chris vermulen from the technicaltraders.com chris thank you so much for joining us today hey thanks for having me elijah it's great to have you. And what a crazy couple of weeks we've had a huge rally in the metals and then a, a pullback to right pretty much where we were before. So what do you think, first of all, is happening in the metals markets right now? Yeah, well, let, let me pull up the charts of metals. Let's take a quick look at the charts from a technical standpoint. And uh, it has been quite the wild roller coaster. I mean, precious metals have been under pressure for a long time. Uh, and really, it started to get pretty exciting here over the last uh, couple of weeks. We started to see a rounding formation here on the daily chart of gold. It started to kind of perform really well while the stock market was collapsing, which is a good sign. But then we actually saw a huge wave of panic selling in the stock market. And when there's a certain amount of fear, it generally will pull pretty much most asset classes down, including precious metals, miners. Uh, and, and that's what we saw. We saw mass liquidation. I think there was about a billion dollars being pulled out of the, the uh, SP 500 each day there for a few days in a row, just mass liquidation. And, and it really causes margin calls, people to just sell everything, they panic. And so we saw a huge pullback in gold, but I do still feel that gold, precious metals are, they're trying to form a nice base here. They're trying to form a bottom. And I think we're still within this, you know, the best view really I think is the, uh, the weekly chart of, of gold. When you look at it, we're in this beautiful bull flag pattern. I think the downward move is done. It's now trying to base and put in what I think is going to be kind of like a rounding formation. It's going to take time eventually. And, you know, we're going to have to, not the straightest of lines, but we're going to build this rounding formation. Eventually, we're going to start to see it break up. Uh, I think there's a lot of things coming into play that are going to help precious metals and commodities in general. But, um, you know, the pressure last week, I think, was panic selling. And we saw a huge rally in the U.S. dollar, and that just really took the wind out of the sails short term for precious metals. Neither higher highs or lower lows. It's just kind of, yeah, that consolidation movement. Is that what you're seeing right now? So it seems like something has to change before we see a big move to the upside or downside. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's going to be a pretty critical level down here around uh, 1750. We've had some wicks pierce through that, but we're never really a closing bar. So once we start to break out of this range, it's going to be exciting. I'd like to see us start to break above, um, you know, this high right over here, which is around 1855 or this high. If we start to break these this low here around 1750, that's going to be a really bearish sign. So um, we just have to let gold continue to play out. I mean, we've been trading sideways here for a year and change, and these are big patterns. They're going to have big potential. Uh, but we really need to let it work itself up. I do think we're favoring a uh, a major super cycle to the upside for commodities and precious metals. But again, this can still take several more months, quarters. For all we know, it could be another year before it breaks out. I do think this is a good year for gold, but um, nothing moves uh, on these type of patterns uh, very quickly. And what about for silver? Do you think it'll follow gold or do you think silver will take the lead? Um, I, silver, I, I tend to feel like it, it kind of lags a little bit. Usually silver kind of lags. We see gold, gold miners do for, do well. And then suddenly silver out of nowhere will just pop and take off and take over the media and, and really be the one that everyone wants to get into. Uh, right now it's trading right back down, down to these lows. If it, if it starts to break this 22 level and close below there, that'll be a pretty bearish sign. I think we could go very quickly down to 22, potentially down to this, uh, 1850, 19 mark. Uh, so it's still not, you know, it, it's it hasn't turned up yet. It is doing what gold is doing. It's trading sideways and it's holding its ground. And we really just need to see what uh, which way it's going to break along with gold over the next uh, couple of months going forward. And right now it's down at support. This is a key level. So this is a spot where I mean, it's a good l level to accumulate. 
But if it breaks down, it is going to drop very quickly down to 20, potentially all down to, down to 1850, which will be the next critical support level uh, for silver as well. So we're really waiting to see which way this market is going to go. And I think uh, this year, precious metals will put in a base. They're going to start to bottom and move higher. But with, with panic selling in the stock market, it uh, is going to keep some downward pressure on, on precious metals right now. Mentioning the panic selling, that's definitely what we've been seeing this year. The Dow's down about 5%. The Nasdaq's down about 15%. When we did get the economic data, I believe it was Thursday of last week, of the 7% GDP uh, increase in GDP annualized for the fourth quarter 2021, we saw a bit of a bounce in the stock market. Do you think the trend is still down or are we going to rally from here? Yeah, depending how you look at the markets, uh, the, the trend will vary. It depends on your time frame. This is where a lot of people get confused. Uh, from a short-term standpoint, the stock market's very oversold. It's ready for a bounce. Uh, it is bouncing today as you and I are doing this uh, talking here. It's breaking last week's high. So, you know, from a bigger standpoint for position-wise, like we've moved to cash right now. We don't want to be holding the stock market. We moved into cash a couple of weeks ago before this collapse uh, kind of triggered. We could see massive weakness coming, huge outflows taking control. We stepped aside, the market has collapsed. Now we're letting it uh, shake itself out, figure out if it's going to form a bearish flag and stay in a downtrend, or if it is actually going to recover and then build a base and then start a new rally. So right now from kind of a, uh, a swing trading slash you know position trader, somebody who holds positions for a few weeks, few months, uh, we are in cash and the trend is still down on that regard. If you're a very short-term momentum trader, it's breaking up to the upside today. So you know, over the next two or three days, there, this could be a really good, strong run for a short-term trader. Um, and if you look at it from a big, long-term investing point of view, this is nothing more than just a pullback uh, within a major bull market. So it really varies on your style of trading, how you look at it, how you're going to attack. So overall, we're still really bullish at this point on the market. Um, but in terms of being an active kind of investor active trader we're sitting on the sidelines waiting to see you know is this just a kind of a dead cat bounce where it's going to roll over and sell off later this week or next week or does it have legs and, and are there technicals confirming that there's money moving back in that this is a solid rally versus just a bounce what are some of those indicators you'll be looking for to see whether this is a rally or a bounce Right. So we like to see how the stock indexes are, are comparing to defensive sectors um, like gold, utilities, bonds, things like that. We want to see the stock market outperforming dramatically and holding their value. Um, we want to see the trend on different time frames turn up and, and start to hold bullish patterns. We want to see a series of higher highs and higher lows on the 30 minute chart. We want to see it on the daily chart. Uh, really, we want to get back above the 50 day moving average. Um, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of little things that what they all add up and some of them just take time in order for this to happen. We don't try to trade knee jerk reaction bounces or sharp drops like that. We look to wait for a rebound. We want it to recover. And usually it takes uh, a couple of weeks for that to form. And, and then we get a signal. So we don't uh, focus too much on the really short term stuff, but we need the markets to show that they are the, the, where the money's flowing. Um, in terms of risk on, risk off. And then that's when we get back involved with either getting long the equities market or potentially getting into a defensive play with, with either an inverse ETF or potentially play the treasury bonds if so, treasury bonds are acting as a safe haven, which they haven't been really since the COVID crash. Right after the COVID crash, they've been out of favor. Um, so it's uh, it's kind of a dance right now. These markets are very unique, rising rates, I uh, have fear. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on, pulling everything in different directions each week. So it's really just reanalyze every day, every week, depending on your horizon for investments or positions and then uh, taking action then. And when it comes to the whole situation with Russia and Ukraine, it seems like things are heating up and this could possibly impact energy prices. What is your uh, what is your take on oil prices and how this whole geopolitical situation may impact that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, typically war is good for oil, energy is good for gold. Uh, we have seen oil on this daily chart here have a very strong run. It has potential here to keep on going and, and pushing up. I think it's in striking distance of the $100 per barrel mark. Um, based on longer term chart patterns, if we were to zoom back here, um, crude oil has actually hit our 100% measured move at 88 
$89 a barrel. And since then, it's pulled back and it's kind of trading sideways. So it has already had its run. But now that we're talking, you know, what, what's going on in Russia, that could actually spur crude to go higher. Supply demand, um, same with natural gas, has been on a huge um, uh, rally the last few sessions. So I think we're going to continue to see oil hold up and we're going to see potentially gold continue to hold up. Uh, going forward. And um, we're in a really good scenario, I think, for commodities in general. I did a, a, a presentation about two years ago talking about we we're going to be see a big pullback in precious metals. It was going to take a year or two. And then we're going to start to see it turn up along with, with crude oil. And, and that's exactly what we're seeing in gold. Crude oil has been moving up ever since, but we have, uh, we're seeing the precious metals cycle, the super cycle I talked about, just starting to kick off. And I think we're going to see a huge rally over the next two or three years in precious metals that uh, are going to be pretty astonishing. In the stock market, I'm hearing a lot of people saying that it's overvalued. If you do look at more of those long-term metrics, are you looking for a major pullback in the stock market? I am. I, th I think this this uh, rally is getting pretty long in the teeth, and uh, I think stocks are are pretty overvalued. They're pretty pretty rich. Um, the stock market. I think fifty percent of the the stocks in the Nasdaq are are at uh, all year at yearly lows or, or twelve month lows. I mean, really, this market, the stock market is going up very, very cautiously, uh, but with very few stocks supporting it. Really, most sectors, when we look at all the sectors, almost every sector is down. The only sector that's actually bullish is uh, the energy sector and um, also the um, carbon ETF, which is a bit different of a play. But other than that, every sector we follow is in a downtrend in a bearish stage. Yet the stock market was at all time highs really only a month ago, not even. Uh, the SP 500. So it's pretty, pretty big divergence. And I think um, the Fed starting to increase rates, the Fed may be buying or starting to liquidate some of their shares. I mean, we're, I think we're late stages here of a bull market. And this is when commodities do well. This is when precious metals and gold miners come to life. Uh, so I mean, we're in that perfect storm for a nice move in commodities and precious metals. If we could consider, because there are, it is such an uncertain time right now, um, and investors are looking to have have something that's going to do well, you know, for the longer term. What are some sectors that you're looking at? That's a good question because I am not so much a long term kind of buy and hold. I don't want to hold through a bear market, which I think is coming. Whether it comes this year or in three years, it doesn't matter. When it does come, I won't be holding something long term through it. Um, I, I like the indexes. I really do. The SP 500 is one of my favorite indexes. NASDAQ's my second favorite. Um, it's really tough to beat the indexes in general. So if, if you want to just do something that's set it and forget it, collect your dividend, you know, you could trade the SP 500 ETF. There's the high dividend SP 500 ETF. So it's focusing more so on just the heavy weighted on the dividend paying stocks. That way you're generating some monthly quarterly cash flow. Um, those are the, kind of the best ways to try to navigate the markets with the, the least drawdown. But keep in mind, the stock markets drop 35 percent, 55 percent during bear markets. Uh, NASDAQ was like 80 something percent back in 2000. So it can be a bumpy ride. Uh, I think the key is trying to keep up with the indexes. And when things uh, from a technical standpoint start to break down, you want to move to cash or you want to move to something that is going to be very more a, a lot more dormant, just even just moving to bonds. Um, is, is a much safer play than holding the stock market. So you will need to um, rotate your capital if you want to get the most out of it. You know, if you can avoid bear markets, you can retire 5, 10, 15 years sooner or retire with three or five times more money if you navigate and avoid the bear markets and reinvest near the bottoms. So that's the way that I focus and that's the way I go. So. And some people are looking for kind of a moment maybe where there might be a sell everything a moment for kind of all of the markets and people are uh, going into cash. Do you see that in the near future and how do people possibly navigate that? Yeah, uh, I, I think we're getting close to one. Now, mind you, I thought we were really close to one in, in 2015, 2016. I thought we were starting a bear market. Market never confirmed or broke down. And I, I feel just as confident as I did back then. I think we're very close to another bear market. Uh, when it does happen, yeah, it will be. We'll be telling our subscribers, you know, this we're now in a bear market. We're liquidating our long term investment portfolio. Uh, we'll be liquidating our short term trading and, and taking advantage of falling prices with our short term uh, trading strategies. 
Uh, and really, you, you just need to be able to know when that happens. And that's what, that's what I focus on. That's what we specialize in is telling long-term investors when a bear market started and when it's ended. And, um, and for short-term trading, we do the same thing for sectors and uh, the indexes. And um, yeah, I think if you don't know how to identify those, you should find some, some way of, of being notified that, uh, hey, this is kind of liquidate all sit on the sidelines and, you know, be, be very low stress while the rest of the world's, you know, falling apart around you. And then you can get back involved when the technicals say, Hey, everyone just lost their shirts. The markets have reset. Stocks are at a fair value. Dividends are huge because you're buying them at a much lower price. And then you re reload, you know, near a market bottom uh, when they're, everything's fairly or undervalued. Uh, so that's what, that's what I specialize at with the technicaltraders.com. Definitely. And that's the website, technical, the technicaltraders.com. Any last thoughts before we let you go? And if you wanted to share a bit about that. Sure. Um, overall, I think we covered everything pretty well. I think you still got to be along the markets as an investor. I think over the next potentially a month or two, we might know if a bear market is starting, um, but not saying it is. And um, at the Technical Traders, every morning I do a little video similar to what we were showing here to recap on all the major markets and what's going on yesterday, what's happening pre-market, how it affects our trades. And um, we just kind of follow the markets day by day. And whatever ETF trade that uh, we take, we share it with subscribers. And we've got a live community of traders that can share ideas with each other in the members area. So it's a, it's a great, uh, great way to learn and trade at the same time. Fantastic. Chris Vermeulen, once again, thank you so much for your time and God bless. Thanks for having me. Take care. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we will let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by Bankwire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be double boxed, fully insured and labeled discreetly with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Elijah, my brother Kaiser, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.